What's up all you cardboard gamblers? We're back today talking about vending boxes. What's in the box? More specifically, are vending boxes a scam? Let's go. Well, I bought two online and I wanted to find out, could I get a highly graded card out of a vending box that I bought on eBay? So here's how it was delivered to my house, obviously with these vending boxes. I'm a little bit concerned about how they're packaged. So this one came in a US mailbox. We have newspaper. And then if you see here, this is in bubble wrap. Pretty well packaged. And then there's newspaper all around. So I'm gonna give this, we're off to a good start. Let's just put it that way. All right, that's a pretty good looking box right there. I don't think cards can be searched, put back in this way, but I may be mistaken. Let's find out here. Start with this, I pull out of the middle here. Just gonna see how this section goes. So this is my middle, this is my right. All right, so my immediate reaction is these cards look to be in pretty, pretty good shape for being in a vending box. So this card, or this set, we're looking for McGuire, Bonds, Bo, Barry Larkin, rookie card. There's 792, 792 cards in this set. Okay, so that was that middle section. Let's see, what we got this is some dinged cards. Here's a bow. All right, so we're about halfway through the box. We have a Barry Larkin, Bo Jackson, and Mark McGuire. I'm just going through this quickly, so I will reassess after I go through this first box. So the reason I'm testing this out is I've also purchased boxes of 87 tops. I know they're readily available for for purchase. So I wanted to see how vending box stack vending boxes stack up to those. You get 500 in the box. I'm not counting, so I'm assuming that that's the case. Obviously, like a box, you can get multiple of certain players. Essentially what I'm doing here is a taste test. Vending box versus wax box versus cello. Now I haven't done the cello or the wax box on camera, but I have opened them in the past. I will say the rack packs, cello, not cello, I'm sorry, rack packs. The rack packs are all, you know, you, you figure out who's on top and, and get the cards that are following. So. If they've been searched, you're probably not going to get the big cards that you're looking for. If you know who's in front of them, there's Barry Bonds. So right now we have, you know, four of the, all four of the big cards to get. No doubles. I'm not noticing a lot of doubles, just of the commons either. Some of these vending boxes can turn into a treasure for multiple pulls of the of the card you're looking for. So, you know, this box could have three Barry Bonds, it could have three Bo Jacksons, it could have none for that matter. You know, there's like I said, there's only 500 in this box. So, it's a nice Mattingly card. 
and a box has more, clearly, a wax box, but you're going to pay more. All right, so no duplicates of the stars, but all right, now I'm going to look at the, I'm going to look at the integrity of these. Okay, so here's the Maguire, a little off center. Corner dinged on this side. Not great. Larkin. Not great. Way off center on the bonds. Not great. Bo Jackson have a printing mark right here. I'd say the corners are pretty comparable to when you pull them out of a wax box or a rack pack. So that's what I was really wondering. You know, do the corners stay intact when they get... These boxes are so thin and flimsy that it's really hard to keep these cards, their integrity <laughs> for, we're talking since 1987, it's a long time. So, you know, when you're talking 30 plus years in the box like this, cards are going to get compromised. Which is why it's so challenging to pull cards that are in perfect condition from boxes that have been sitting around, transported around, changed hands many times. But if you plan for that, and you look at it and say, well, I'm not going to probably get a 10 out of here. If you plan for that, you'll be pleased with these cards. But if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to get a 10 out of this. You are going to be mistaken. All right, box number two. Way off center, Barry Bonds. Whew, look at that, buddy. Ouch. That's the one thing that you always worry about, right? This is the gamble a little bit. What kind of card am I going to pull out of here? Not as even not the corners, not the surface, but how it's cut, everything. I mean, there's so much to worry about. And this is where I go back to if if you're adding cards to your personal collection and you're looking to add a PSA 10 Barry Bonds 1987 tops, go buy it. Buy a PSA 10. You're going to spend more money chasing it than you will if it were to actually happen organically or opening a pack. Just go buy it. I, honestly, I just, that's what I, that's what I feel is, is, is the best approach. I mean, I know the hunt and opening cards like this is, is really fun and exciting, but that's what it all, that's, that's all it should be for is cheap entertainment. You should not be looking for PSA 10s if you're in that market in a box or a vending vending box, a wax box, cello, whatever the case may be, you are not going to find it more than likely. And so that's my only advice. If that's the card you're looking for, go buy it, uh, PSA 9 or 10, just to have it to your personal collection. And I think that's kind of the the approach that I'm taking. If there's a card that I really want, I understand now especially from the 80s or 90s or earlier, you're not going to find them in a PSA 10 in a box. So I have gotten some duplicates in here already, halfway, less than halfway through this box. Look at that cut. Oosh. The card I'm really looking for is that Bo Jackson. I think that's the coolest card in the set. I think it has the most demand as well. I've said it before, Bo Jackson sells. Have not gotten one in the second box, got one early in the first box. You might be looking, wow, he left that guy in the 
comments pile and then pull them out. Yes, that's true. There's a Pete Rose in there that I left. Alan Trammell. Some other Hall of Famers. I'll go back and get those. Just pulling out some guys that I like. Guys that have demand on the market. Kirby Puckett's one of those guys. Ryan Sandberg. All right, this, this box a little bit less productive for us. We got a McGuire, Bo Jackson, Barry Bonds, all in our last box. This box proving to be less fruitful. There's a Jose Canseco card, again, off cut, or off center, I should say, miscut. Pete Rose. So I'm down to my last pile here. See if we get a Bo Jackson or a McGuire. All right, so that will do it. No Bo Jackson, no McGuire, only the Bonds and Canseco out of this one that were uh, terribly off center. Um, picked out some other all-stars. So here's kind of our haul, if you will, from the... Let's see if there's any other guys that are... Yeah, it's Will Clark. Hey, that's... Yeah, that's his rookie. Um, the Palmero rookie card. Let's see if there's any other one. Be good like Will Clark there pockets and all this stuff. Yes, I did pull out a Wally Joyner. So here's what we're looking at right here. These cards aren't in fantastic shape. Um, that's the reality, like I said, of opening 1987 cards. Uh, you're going to find that many of them are off center. Many of them have printing marks. I will say this about the vending box. So let's see, I pulled the Bo Jackson out of that first box. I'm looking at it through the light here. The surface is pretty good. You can see, uh, maybe I can see it, but there's fading. There's some print marks that will get uh, some dings. Overall, though, the cards, you know, the cards held up pretty well. There's there's some that have dings on the corner. I think this was the, let's see if this was the Barry Larkin that has some extra, I would say just extra card stock more than it is a ding. Barry Bonds was off center. See the McGuire. Again, that's a that's like almost extra cardstock more than it is a ding. The back's really good. There's not a lot of lines or blemishes on here. Again, the Canseco came out of that. You have to clean these up a little bit. The cards held up pretty well in these vending boxes, all in all. I mean, really, the only major issue here... See, look at this. I'm just going to show you real quickly. So this is a Pete Rose card. Probably not a lot of value to it. The corner here is dinged. This came out of that second box. Even that corner is a little bit dinged. I don't remember where it was in the box, but just look at the coloring. Look at how the comparison of this coloring to this coloring. I would say this is probably more of the vibrant color that PSA is looking for. So if the Bo Jackson had this vibrant color, that would be probably more valuable. So, you know, that's just, that's the difference of these. I mean, they, you can really see the difference between, here, I'll do a, like a, the reds. I think that's, that's a huge difference between the look of those cards. And I would say that this one is probably the one that would get graded higher because it has more vibrant color. So overall, um, it's fun to open these. I wouldn't buy these again. Um, I just don't see the value in spending the money that I did on getting these type of cards at the grade that I see these coming back as. I don't see these any of these coming close to a 10. I'd be hard pressed to get some of these graded as a nine. So overall, I think uh, I'm, I'm passing on this if I come across it again. Um, I might try again with some other vending boxes, maybe a little bit more uh, uh, inexpensive even, and in person. But I will say, the person who sent this, they took very good care of it. They respected the process of shipping and putting it into those bubble wraps and getting, to, getting it to me in great condition. All right, so the cards that I got in these two vending boxes weren't very good. In fact, I don't even think any of them are going to come back a nine. So I would say vending boxes are definitely a crapshoot. Stop buying dumb shit. Even if the vending box is supposedly unsearched, 
My guess is if it's an older box, it's probably been searched. Maybe not by the seller who you bought it from, but somewhere along the line, somebody took a peek in there and looked at some of the top cards to make sure they weren't giving away a PSA 10. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! So I'm gonna say no to vending boxes again in the future, especially ones bought on eBay. I think vending boxes do have potential, if you buy them in person, and especially if they are wrapped. So if you're willing to go and find those and pay a little bit extra, vending boxes can work for you. But like everything else we've talked about on this page, if you're not patient, disciplined, and willing to grind, then this hobby might not be for you.